Hi everyone and welcome to this Prominence Developer Chat. My name is Mike Morrison from Digital Media Workshop and we were thrilled to see the positive response to our original developer chat. So thank you very much for that. And I'm happy to say that we're back with another installment. And this time, we're going to talk a little bit about the story and the world behind Prominence and some of the ways we've been working to bring the player's story to life. And to help do that, I'm joined once again by Kevin McGrath, who is the lead programmer and co-designer on Prominence. Hey, Kevin, how's it going? Hello, Mike. It's good to be back. So we should probably first talk about how this is uh, spoiler-free. Yes, that's right. This whole chat is, we're going to talk a lot about story and backstory and stuff. We're not going to spoil anything in the game for you. All the cool little secrets that we have in the game, there's still going to be cool little secrets. Um, essentially, it makes the experience richer um, for you know the people who are going to play the game. So how about we start off with uh, a rundown of the basic story of the game? Sure, sure. The game story revolves around uh, a group of people known as the Latari, who are trying to colonize a permanent home for themselves. And they plan on doing this on a remote world. Um, so there's a vanguard ship uh, with a team of about 30 or so experts that's traveling six months ahead of the main population. And their job is basically to get to the planet and set up shop there. Yeah, once they get to the planet, the ship that they've traveled in uh, goes into orbit and becomes sort of an orbital factory. And it has these manufacturing facilities on it, and it begins cranking out the structures and the vehicles and the machinery that they need. And then that stuff is shuttled down to the surface, to the colony site where it's assembled. And this gives them a big chunk of time uh, to build some infrastructure before the the main Latari fleet arrives with the full population. Unfortunately for the Latari people, something has gone terribly wrong with the mission. Dun, dun, dun. Of course, <laughs> because otherwise, you know, it wouldn't be very interesting. And so, so, you know, with this whole thing gone wrong, it's up to the player to figure out what happened and to sort of get the whole thing back on track again. Um, and, of course, millions of Latari are heading on their way to their new home, so their fate is really in the hands of the player. So let's talk a little bit more about the Latari people uh, and a little background on them and how they got into this mess. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So um, so the Latari originally hailed from their home world known as Latar. Um, and as they were living on this world throughout their history, um, at a certain point, there's an expanding group of uh, star systems um, called the Rhinan Collective that essentially send representatives to Latar once they find them and say, hey, why don't you come and join our club? Okay, you know, we've got, you know, we're trading and, uh, you know, we're exchanging technologies and stuff. It'll be a good deal. You can join in and, you know, and then you have all these possibilities with all these other cultures. And some of the Latari felt like this merging of cultures uh, might be a really good thing, while others, of course, felt like it was going to threaten their way of life. So the Latari who really felt like this was a bad idea, they banded together and they actually left their home world. They went on a migration and they settled on these two far-off frontier worlds um, that were sort of in, like, neutral space. Um, these two worlds, Taratha and Pelinus. Right. And as, as the years pass, um, the Rhinan Collective evolves from um, this, this collective into what is essentially an empire. Okay? They continue to expand, and Rhina becomes the big capital planet and then they start you know enacting all these laws and certain freedoms are taken away and so the latari who stayed behind on their home world they soon found themselves restricted by all these laws and rules a lot of which ran counter to their beliefs the beliefs of their culture so as this continues to happen more and more latari leave and they join their brethren out on the frontier um, they realize that, that, hey, these guys who left early on, 
they had the right idea. Hopefully, they'll still take us in. Um, and so they make the journey from Latar to Taratha and Pelnus. Right. So by now, um, as this as these additional migrants come in, there's sort of a critical mass of Latari brewing on these frontier worlds. But the Latari aren't the only ones on these worlds. They're sharing these worlds as part of other settlements with other races and other people, some of who are outcast, some are people who want to just live in a, a society that's a little less burdened by uh, government and laws. And so the Latari are, are sharing this space with these guys, but all these other guys were here first. And so there's a certain level of persecution that the Latari are enduring with this. So they realize as they're reaching this critical mass of population that they, they just might have the resources to really strike out on their own. So they develop a plan to colonize a world of their own. And they begin designing ships and designing plans, and they send out probes, send them out to explore the deepest ranges of space, and they start putting ideas together uh, because they want to build themselves a better future. Right, right. And then what happens, rather unfortunately, is that war breaks out between the Rhinan Empire and this other empire called the Medorans. And as it turns out, this, this neutral zone of space um, happens to be, you know, located somewhat between these two empires. So it's clear that this whole area is going to turn into a war zone. Um, so if the Latari are going to do anything about making their own home world out on the far reaches of space... They'd better do it now. And so the Latari make a decision to fast track the colonization of this remote world for themselves. They basically pick a candidate planet, they dub it New Latar, and they get together all the resources that they can, um, and they put it into migrating the, the Latari populations from Taratha and Pelonis to New Latar. Right, so they, they create this idea of this vanguard ship that's yep. going to have this yep. factory on it and it's going to have a, sort of a skeleton crew and um, a very powerful and advanced central computer that's going to sort of run the automation of the colony and, and help put things together and, and sort of coordinate everything for them. And that vanguard is going to go ahead about six months and then everybody else is going to get into the various ships that they're going to have and the entire fleet is going to just migrate the whole population to this new world. And that's it in a nutshell. So anybody who's seen the website or uh, read some of the interviews or, or seen other things about prominence um, probably knows that when the game starts up, you really don't have an idea of who you are or where you are. And we realize that this is a pretty common thing, in, uh, especially in first-person adventures. Um, but one thing we definitely want you to know is that this is not the story. That's right. Really, by, by the end of the first act... Or so the the player's identity crisis uh, is pretty much over. They're going to know who who they are, and from that point on, they'll actually be able to go on to the rest of the story, which is is sort of you know piecing together everything that happened and and seeing you know if they can fix all the stuff that went wrong. Yeah, and and we designed it this way for a very specific reason. We wanted to support the idea of not having the character know more than the player does. And that's something that happens a lot in adventure games, where you know, we, we've played a lot of games where you get into the game, and your, your character already knows these other people. They know these people, they know these places, and you're walking around. And as the player, you're experiencing them for the first time, but your character has all this supposed familiarity with it. And that always kind of took us out of the game. And so we wanted to try something where the character and the player actually learn things at the same rate. That's right. And it just occurred to me that something we haven't mentioned yet is that we poured a lot of lore into the game. Uh, we have all this information uh, that the player can access. And we decided that this extra lore isn't required to finish the game, but it's there if the players want to dig into it. And really, it's, it's a lot of extra information that just enriches their game experience. And if you're not interested, that's okay. You don't need it to play the game. Uh, but if you are interested, you can kind of dig into it. And I remember a lot of that decision, Kev, came out of the um, uh, 
came out of the question of whether or not the Latar were going to have their own language. Do you remember that? Yes, that's right. And we talked about it, and you were pretty adamant at that point. You said, I really don't want to force translation puzzles that's right. onto the player. Yeah, um, we have a, a certain very small lexicon of uh, what we like to call old Latari words um, that crop up here and there. But it's not a translation thing. You'll be able to figure out what those words mean in their context pretty easily. Um, and there's no, you know, there's no translation puzzles or you know anything like that because we wanted to keep the information flowing to the player. Um, so yeah, so when you go and you know dig into you know the backstory inside the game, you'll be getting it in English or whatever native language. Yeah, and that and that that decision became the cornerstone by which we we sort of had a barometer of okay how much how much culture is too much how much backstory is too much we sort of just that changed our whole mentality about it and we said well let's let's make it accessible but not required that's right and as soon as we did that right. we realized that we were opening up the game in a way that people can get what they want out of it more easily they're not forced into doing something but if they want it it's there it's there yes and uh, you know, there is a certain section of adventure gamers I know who love to dig in through the details. Um, and so we try to make it so that they can do that, but those sorts of details are not required for actually playing the game. Well, I think we've, we've probably babbled enough for one dev chat, haven't we? Uh, I think so. I think it's about time to wrap this one up. <laughs> okay. Well, next time, we'll take a look at some of the characters in prominence, along with some of the other aspects of the story. We hope you'll join us again next time and that you'll enjoy the full game when it releases later this year. If you're watching this video and you have any questions or feedback, you can post them in the comments section. Or you can send us an email at info at prominencegame.com. Yes, and we really appreciate all the questions and feedback and uh, comments that you guys have been sending us. Thank you very much again for that. Um, please keep them coming. You can also check us out on Facebook or at the official site, prominencegame.com. And we'll include links uh, in the description below for those. So thanks again for joining us on this Prominence Developer Chat. Have a great day. So long, everyone. So long, everybody.